Last Sunday, uh, Pastor Ross, he started us on this, on this new series called Unhurried, Slowing Down and Finding Life. And th- there, is, there is just some imagery that, that, uh, that he, he did up here that it just kind of stuck with me all week. And I just want to give you the, those three points that, that he had just to kind of help us, give us some, like a foundation to stand on as we continue to build on what he said. The three things that he kind of left us with was maximize every opportunity minimize the distractions and prioritize the presence of God. And, and as he was talking, as he was preaching, he kind of he kind of said, you know, Jesus is right here. And we, we in our hurried life and everything that we got going on, we're like, okay, Jesus, yeah, I got some things going on. So come on, Jesus, come on with me. I got these things that I got to get done. And I got to, like, come on, Jesus, like, let's, let's go, let's get this stuff done. And, and a lot of times we're just like, okay, well, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back next Sunday and we can talk then, okay? And we go on in our lives. We go on doing all these things and we leave, kind of leave Jesus behind. And that, that, that imagery, it just kind of stuck with me and it resonated so deeply with me because what this whole, the whole point of what we've been talking about is slowing down and finding the pace that Jesus wants us to walk in. And so often we, we talked about it a little bit and we'll talk a little bit more about it is just how society influences us. It influences our dreams and our aspirations. It influences our, the career choices that we choose and, and, and how we live our lives. And Jesus is saying, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there, there's, there's, there's a different way that I want you to be in a different life that I want you to live because you are mine. Because you've given your heart to me. Every, everything should change. Everything should, should look different in your life because I am part of it. Not, not just part of it. Let me, let me rephrase that. I am the number one thing in your life. I preached a few weeks ago, and, and I, just, I, was just, I was just burning in my heart just the, the truth of the gospel that God is God, that, that he deserves it all. He deserves all that we are and everything that we have. He deserves all of it because he died for it. Because he is king. He is Lord. I want to just kind of talk about a little, a little bit about that, just about reprioritizing our lives. Because no, no, matter, no matter what, because we, th- we think about this, right? And we, we look to Jesus as our Redeemer. We look to Jesus as our Savior and our Lord at, at times. If we can, you know, if we can remember, right? If we, if we have time to do it, that, that's what we'll do. And we, we offer up a, a prayer of, of gratitude when, when something great happens in our lives. Oh, God, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so thankful. But absolutely and most definitely when we're in trouble. <laughs> it's, a, it's quiet in the house. <laughs> and, and that's okay because he loves us. The Bible tells us that his grace is sufficient for us. But to look to Jesus as an example on how we are to live our lives, well, you know, so many think, well, I mean, come on, Pat. I mean, he lived so long ago, and it was so different, and, and it ain't the same like it was back then. And, I mean, just the technological advances alone, I mean, just, just add so much, and we're, we're just different. But no matter how, how advanced and how, how grand the advancement, there's a, there's a couple of things that, that will never change. One, we humans in and of ourselves are limited beings. We are limited. We, we only have a, a certain amount of time. There, there is only a certain amount of resource that we have within ourselves. We are limited beings. You agree with that? Yeah. All right. The second thing is God was, is and forevermore will be God. Those, those two things, we can assuredly say every morning when we wake up, those things are true. And, and it's, it's, uh, quite honestly, it's, it's the, the scripture that we've been kind of looking at and we've, we've been standing on. And it, it's, it's Jesus' invitation and him reminding us that we need him and that, that he is there for us to give all that we are to him. In Matthew 11, verse 28 the Bible says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I, Jesus says, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke 
upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I, I heard this week that, you know, it, it is, it's by God's grace that we are saved, but we, we cannot forget that it is by his, the same grace that we are sustained. It's so good. It's by God's grace that we get saved. We come to him. We give him all the way on. Ooh, thank you, Lord. All right, let me, let me go do what I need to do. No, it's the same grace that he wants us to establish ourselves in, in everything that we do. He wants to walk with us in that same grace. He wants to live with us in that same grace. We can't leave it behind. We can't leave him, put him to the side. And this, this series, that's what it's been. It's been a challenge for all of us. It's been a challenge for, for who we may have become. Because the Bible tells us that for all those who are in Christ Jesus, that we have been given the right to be called children of God. So if, if you've received him as your Savior, you are his child. You've been given that right. But sometimes living in such a, a frenetic, at such a frenetic pace in this world and culture and, and, and the things that, that the culture says you have to, society says you have to have these things, you have to achieve these things, has led us to be something else. And the truth is, we work, we play, we, we live, we live in a culture that, that's obsessed with speed. And quite honestly, I, just, I blame Amazon. I mean, two days used to be good enough. Like, okay, I'll get my stuff in two days. But no, now it's like, uh, I'm a Prime member. I should get it today. I don't care that it's 6 o'clock. <laughs> so it's Amazon's fault. But, but, but it's, it's like, I saw these kinds of things. Like, how fast can I get my lunch delivered? I need, I need my lunch now. I, I, what's, what's, the, what's the speed limit here? How, how fast can we go? Like, is there, what, the, the Wi-Fi is really bad in here. I can't get any service. How fast is the Wi-Fi? What's the download speed? All these things. Sorry, I adjusted that a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's big fix the mic back there. <laughs> Technology. How fast can I go? What's the download speed? What, what, how, how fast can I lose weight? What, 10 pounds in 10, 21 days? No, I want to lose 10 pounds in 10 days. And I really don't want to work hard at it either. Is there not a pill that I can just take? Help me lose weight. No, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, did you know that there's actually an epidemic that, that is real? It's called hurry sickness. It's, if, if Rosemary Sword and Philip uh, Zimbrano, the authors of The Time Cure, uh, offered these symptoms as hurry sickness. These are some symptoms of hurry sickness. All right, I don't want to see anybody elbow anybody as I read through these symptoms, okay? <laughs> I, I see it coming. If I, was, if I was sitting next to my wife, my ribs would be sore by the time we finished through these. Moving from one checkout line to the other because this one's going to go faster. When you're driving, this lane's gonna go faster. I'm gonna pull over this lane. No, no, this lane over here. No, this lane. Moving from lane to lane because one of them is gonna go faster. Multitasking to the point where you forget the task that you were supposed to be doing because you got so many going on. I, I, ha I have to admit this. Like, I, have, I think I have like three or four to do apps on my phone right now. Like, like three or four different to-do apps and, and like apps to make lists. I love lists. Lists are so amazing. Especially when you can put the box next to them, you can kind of check them. It's glory. The, the truth is that the world is moving faster. The, 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 the societal pace has sped up. But it wasn't always like this. In, in, in 1370, uh, time was natural. You, you went to bed with darkness and you woke up with the sun in 1370. But that same year, the first clock tower was erected in Germany. And the artificial time, as we know it, was born. The proverbial nine to five started. We stopped listening to our bodies, started looking at our watches and our phones. Fast forward to 1879, Thomas Edison created the light bulb. Now you could effectively do things at night. 
not just by candlelight, but actually illuminating with a light bulb. It's made it possible for people to stay up past sunset. You know, in those times, people would normally get 11 hours of sleep. Americans nowadays get about 6.8. Maybe, maybe some, uh, maybe one of the things that, that attributes to our frenetic pace, our disorganized life. About a century ago, technology really started to change with things that, you know, are called so-called labor-saving devices. Like, like, just take, for instance, you know, you, you, these guys are about to go into the mountains. And before, you'd have to, you wanted to start a fire, you had to go and you had to chop a tree down. You had to clean it up. You had to chop it down with an axe. You wouldn't out there with a chainsaw. Out there with an axe, you had to make sure your axe was, set, was sharp. Drag it all the way back, chop it up. And, and then start, start piling up the kindling and the tinder and, and your fuel and, and get a fire going to get warm. Now we just go over to the thermostat. And if, if you're my wife, you go all the way to 90 because you want to get... I love you, baby. Because it warms you up faster. It's proven. Science. We used, to, we used to walk everywhere, right? We used, to, we used to walk everywhere, but now we have cars to get us there quicker, to get us there faster. We used to write letters, take our time, get, sit down and, and write, pin a letter, send it in the mail. You get it two, three, a week later. Now, now it's, all, it's, it's email. You get it instantly. Everything is instant. We used, to, we used to make food from scratch. Now you just have to go through a drive through window. And, and, and even now, you don't even have to go through the drive through window. You can call Uber Eats or DoorDash or Favor, and they'll bring it right to you. You don't even have to get up. Yet, yet despite our smartphones and programmable coffee pots and dishwashers and laundry machines and toasters, most of us feel like we have less time, not more. Why? Because like these labor-saving, these, these time-saving, labor-saving devices, they, they actually did save us time. But we've already spent the time that they saved on other things. And I, I would say that it, it all reached its climax in 07 with a man named Steve Jobs. And the iPhone was introduced. Year one of the cloud and of apps a few months later, Facebook went public and Twitter became its own platform. And the list of other technological advances came about that year. And all allowing us to, to stay connected, to be more connected, but more, more connected to what? To Instagram? To Twitter? To Facebook? For some of you, the WhatsApp? To stay more connected to emails? to work, to stay more connected. Entire world, both, both metaphorically and literally in the palm of our hand. Why, why is this all so important to recognize? Why, 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 are, why are we talking about this? Well, well, because what you give your attention to is the person you become. What you give your attention to is the person you, you become. Put another way, your, your mind, your eyes, your mind, your heart, your mouth, your, those are the portals to your soul. And what you fill your mind with will shape the trajectory of your future and of your character. In the end, your, your life is no more than the sum of what you gave your attention to. Matthew 7, 13 says, don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do, the way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. Some of, the, some, of the, some of the most sincerest people, some of the most sincerest and honest Christians today are, is like, can, can say, even though I'm in the presence of God, I find it hard to focus. I find it hard to just focus on him. And church, if we lose our capacity to pay attention to God, no matter what the time frame is, who knows what we'll become. 
Who knows the, what, where we will end up on the road that we're walking because if we lose our ability to pay attention, we lose our awareness of the presence of God. We lose our awareness of his presence. And, and for, for a lot of us, and me included, I, I was here. It's different now, I'm a pastor. He gets all my attention all the time. <laughs> but but, but there, there are responsibilities that we have. That we have responsibilities to go to work and to provide for our families. But what we have to understand is that God doesn't want to be dismissed and separated from those things. If we're dismissing God from our life, we are missing it. You are missing life. Because, listen, I want to remind you that nothing that you accumulate in this world will last in eternity. God is calling us to live a life where we invest in him, where we call his kingdom down, and his kingdom operates through us to change people's lives. Those investments last us an eternity. We're walking right by Jesus. Tell him, catch up. Catch up, God. Come on. I got a lot of things I need to get do today. And God is saying, you're missing life. You're missing life. You're missing it all. All the joy, the true joy, fullness of joy, the peace that surpasses understanding no matter what the situation is. Even if when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, I feel you with me. You're right here with me. More importantly, God, I'm right here with you. I won't take a step until you take a step. No matter how attractive it looks, no matter how lucrative the deal is, no matter how big the amount, no matter what the number, no matter what the temptation, I will not take a step until you take a step. Remember a three-legged race? God, I want to run a three-legged race with you. You try to go faster than somebody in a three-legged race, what do you do? You fall on your face. Somebody, some of us are living on our face. Some of, some of us are living on our face. Because God is saying, that's, that's not the pace, man. Who's, who's telling you? Who's telling you to go this fast? Who's telling you to run at this pace? You're listening to everybody around here instead of the person that you're joined with. And that's Christ. That's him. Pastor and author. If we lose our ability to pay attention, we lose our awareness of God's presence. You see, not only is hurry toxic, toxic to, to our emotional health and spiritual lives, but it is also indicative of a much deeper issue of the heart. Pastor and author John Ortberg, he said it this way. Hurry is not just a disordered schedule. Hurry is a disordered heart. Technology, I want to clarify, isn't any more, isn't any worse, isn't any more bad than money. But it's the love of it that makes it bad. It's our devotion to it. It's our prior, prioritizing of it. Yeah. So, so what do we do? <laughs> How do we fix it? Well, like we talked about earlier, the pace of Christ is, is slow. I, I, I heard this before and I love it. The only thing that is instant is your forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing that comes instantly. Because we work out our salvation. But when we ask Christ to forgive us, he does it instantly. So this is a process. It's hard and it's agonizing. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy. Life, because life is complex. And that's why we're taking several weeks to talk about this, to mull this over. And those two ideas that I want to give us this morning is accept my limitations in life. Accept my limitations in life and accept the life that Jesus has for me now. He wants to be involved in our lives now. We don't have to wait till we spend an eternity. We can do what the things that God wants to do. His kingdom can come now and work through us and do with us to establish what he wants. And then we can rejoice when we get with him. So what if I told you that God wants more for you, but, but he's wired you for less? 
But I told you that you'd be healthier and more fulfilled in your life if your life has more limits. But if I said freedom and fulfillment only come through limitations and healthy boundaries. The truth is, and what we have to admit and fully accept is our limitations as humans. Because if we, we don't do this, we just continue to try to jam more and more and more into our lives because we can do, we can do it. I, I can do it. I, 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 have, I, I can do it. I can make time for it. I can sacrifice this and sacrifice that for this thing. Well, maybe I can just do this thing and those things. Like a, like a Nathan's hot dog eating contest. You're just cramming hot dogs in your mouth as quick as you can. Dip them in water and go. Shakes, <laughs> it's... This is one of, the, one of the nastiest things I've seen. It just gets all over the place. But that's how we are. Just jamming hot dogs. Just go, go, go fast. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And it, but but who's, who's established that plan? Why? Why do you have to hurry, hurry, hurry? Why do you have to go, go, go? Because you have to have more than somebody else? Be, because, because culture says, hey, you, you got to get to this point. Because in, in, the, in the scheme, and in, in the, the pyramid of your job, you have to do that to beat the other guy? You can't take time to minister to people around you? I think what we, what we fail to understand is the power of God. One of, one of our, our values in, in Team One is that we walk slowly through the crowd because the task isn't more important than the person. You see, what, what we fail to forget is that as we go through life, at the, if we're walking in the pace that Jesus has established for us, and he says, hey, I want you to notice this person right here. They're hurting, and you have the answer. And you say, uh, you make the decision. I got a lot of things to do, God, but I'm going to stop and do this. My belief is that God will supernaturally help you get the things that you need to get done done because you're putting him first, because you're doing what God has called you to do first. That's walking at Jesus' pace. That's walking with him. That's walking with a heart open and a mind open and sensitive to the spirit of God that wants to move in you and do things through you wherever, right now in your life, wherever you're working. God can use you. God wants to use you. But you have to be willing. You have to be willing to walk at his pace. You see, we have We've been made in his image. That's what Genesis 1.27 says, that it is in, in his own image, in the image of God that he's created us. But then it also says in Genesis 2.7 that from the dust of the ground, he, he made us. So in us, we, we are the image of God and dust. We have the potential of God, but we have our limitations. That's the balance that we walk in all the time. We walk in, this, in this, this identity that we are, we have this divine capacity within us. We are like God. We have been created to image. We've been created to reflect his behavior. But that's just half of it. Because the other half, we were made from the dirt. Which means we were born with limitations. Although we are like God, we are not God. We're mortal. We're not immortal. We're, we're finite, not infinite. Image and dust, potential and limitations. And Jesus said as much when he outlined what it takes to follow him. Church, this one hit me in the teeth. This, this, one, this one kicked me in the teeth, and, and I hope it does the same to you because it's, it's going to get you where, you where you need to be. You ready? Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Matthew 16, 24 through 6. If, if, you, if, you go, if you go back a little bit in your scripture, it, Jesus just told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter was like, wait a minute, I thought I was on your side. But if you, if you read scripture, it says your, your mind is set on things of man, not on, not on things of the Lord. That's not in the text. I just, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context of what he just got done saying. He just rebuked Peter. Some would say the, the, the baddest dude in the group. And then he says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, who wants to be his disciple? That's the question I pose to you today. Who wants to be his disciple? Hey, guys, help me come up here and finish. 
Whoever wants to be my disciple, if you say in your heart, I want to be a disciple of God. God, I want you to use me. I want you to, I want you to walk through. I want you to operate through me. The very next word says, must deny themselves and take up their cross. Now, I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time you denied yourself for, the, for God? When was the last time you denied yourself? When was the last time that you laid down what you wanted to do because God was telling you to do something different? Has there even been a time? Has, has there even been a time where God has been so involved in the decisions that you make that he is able to speak into them? Or do we make our own decisions? Do we, do we call the shots in our own lives? This decision is ours. The decision is ours. Church, it doesn't matter what we attain in this world. What does it gain a man to conquer the world, to attain the world, and yet lose his soul? This is the reality of the life that we've chosen to walk as a Christian. This is the life that God is asking us to walk in. This is the pace that God wants us to walk in because I'm telling you, if you're not missing out by doing it your own way, you're missing out by not walking in the pace and not walking with the creator of heaven and earth. You're missing out. You're missing it. It was a, there was a moment in my life where I, where in, in a church where Christina and I were so busy, and I've told you this before, that we were like, God, there has to be more than this. We were working in church. We were in church missing out on the life that God wants us to live. Potential, limitations, image, and dust. We have to reorient our hearts to, to align ourselves with who God is calling us to be. To align ourselves with his pace. And that decision is yours and yours alone. It's not mine to make. It's not your brothers or your sisters or your dads or your moms, anybody else's. It's your decision. As we continue to cut these things out, we have to remind ourselves what is the example that Jesus left for us? What are the things that he focused on? What's the pace that he walked in? We see the important things in Scripture. In, in, as he walked in, in the scripture, we see that scripture was one of the things that was important to him. Prayer, gathering with people, with mission. Those are the things that were important to him. They must be in our lives as well if we want to keep pace with him. I want to read the, the scripture that I read to you in, as we worshiped. We're just going to take a moment here and just let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. I'm not, I'm not trying to move you emotionally. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just trying to, I'm just, just trying to give you my heart. And, and I just, I, I want more than anything for you to know God, to know him intimately. Because as you live out your life, and then when your time comes for him to call you home, I want you to have in your regrets. I want you to have in your regrets. I want you to live a full life in Christ. The Bible says in Romans 12, so here's what I want you to do. Here's what God wants us to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. As you're there, let's just take this moment and worship the Lord together.